Christ Christian Church. Come up, lead us in word of prayer, please. Could you pray with me, please? Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We have an opportunity today to see government in action. We pray, Father, that in the deliberations and discussions and decisions that take place this morning, that there will be harmony and agreement. We pray, Father, uh, for the people who accepted this solemn responsibility of servant leadership, seeing to the needs of the people of Madison County. We pray, Father, that you will bless them, protect them, guide them, and, uh, and help them along the way, Father, and that we as citizens will be supported not only in prayer, but in any way that we can. We thank you that we live in a country where we have the freedom to do these things. We pray, Father, that we will not only appreciate our blessings, but use them to help us. And we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we'll invite Elise Rice. We'll share a cold lease in the place. Please, please, please. Also from uh, the Perfect Yard, Richard Stepp, and from Jesse Lakehart. So these are all now public. Uh, you can do that and come back with the appropriate confident decision on the Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Tammy Smith to come up. Month. At this time, I'd like to read the proclamation. Okay. 
Whereas multiple melanoma, the second most common blood cancer worldwide is a cancer of plasma cells in the bone marrow. And whereas multiple melanoma currently affects more than 100,000 people in the U.S. with an estimated 20,000 new cases diagnosed mm -hmm. each year and 10,000 losing their battle. And whereas once a disease of the elderly, it is now being found in increasing numbers in people around of people under 65. And whereas because melanoma is a rare disease, there can be a delayed diagnosis leading to delayed treatment. For that reason, an increased awareness of melanoma for doctors and the public will lead to earlier diagnosis, uh, allowing people to live longer. Therefore, I, Reagan Taylor, Judge Executive in the Mass Camp Fiscal Court, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2015 as Multiple Melanoma Cancer Awareness Month. time I'd like to ask Kate to come up. She's uh, with the Brea Victory Garden Blitz. I think you have a PowerPoint or something. Thank you. We have a
Um, all of our roads, culverts, all those things are permanent expenses. And permanent expenses are the easiest thing in the world to plan for as long as we plan. Um, so I, I hope um, and, and my want is that um, when somebody calls uh, about Hack Your Pipe, that we will be able to give them, we'll be able to look at our road plan and we'll be able to say that's on the books for you know, spring of 2016. Um, and, and it's gonna take a lot of collaboration. Um, you know, it's gonna take a lot of our, um, well right now all the things that are done on roads are put in a log book, they're handwritten uh, in a log book. So for us to go back and look uh, at something that maybe happened on Peyton Town Road, we would have to actually look through a lot of log books. Whereas if we upload and take all that information and get it into a computer program, we would be able to type in Peyton Town Road and it would list the last 10 years of projects that we've done. It would tell us when we blacktop, and when we replaced the culvert, when uh, we put down some rock, when we uh, uh, mowed, the side of the roads when we cut back the trees. I mean, whatever the work that we might have done. Well, would, that, would that follow on with the electronic road maintenance? Is that when you say computer? Is mm -hmm. that on the computer so that would follow on with that? That's right. And, we, and we've actually, uh, uh, and, I, and since we're talking about the road, I'll go ahead and bring this up. We've actually got interns um, that are coming in. We've got 10. Uh, and one of the uh, duties of one of the interns is going to be going ahead and uploading uh, all that information in those log books into Access, which is a program that then, once we get the program, that we'll be able to upload it from Access into that new program. And I don't know what program yet is, we haven't got to that point yet, but uh, I feel like <laughs> that it'll allow us to really be able to cre create, uh, uh, you know, more accurate budgets. Uh, it allow us to plan uh, for long term, um, and you know I think, I mean you know as well as I know that the uh, the road department is is its own animal and it's a big animal, uh, and and you and I have neither one like transfers. No, I don't. <laughs> so you know by planning for the future and having that long term plan is going to allow us to not have so many transfers. I think uh, too, Judge, that you know, just talking about the road plan, I mean, we have one currently, unfortunately, it's not all that accurate and it's definitely needs to revise which any road plan you have is going to need revisions to, we already know that. But the, uh, and it's not to say that we're not going to have emergencies, we're not going to have floods, we're not going to have landslides, we're not going to have things that we're going to have to step in and just take care of and fix. But at least we'll have some history in the, and like you said, be able to do some scheduling to say we've got this much money coming in, here's what we think we're going to be able to do for next year. Maybe that works out, maybe it doesn't, depend on the use of a lot of the other factors. But we have to do something like that. And, and you know, we, we have, obviously with anything we do, we have to use common sense. You know, if you get to road hack your pipe in the year 2016 and it's not quite ready to be, to be resurfaced or that needs to be done, then we move on to one that's more important. But but we still have a plan. That's something the uh, road supervisors and foreman and, and the administrators would put on a weekly basis. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and there's more to this position than that. You know, it's the, it's the mechanics, it's holding people accountable. Uh, you know, it's the uh, uh, just being more responsive, responsible with uh, with overtime, purchasing, fuel, uh, so. So you feel like it's like money in the long run? Absolutely. And, and it's not costing any more money right now, but by the way that that we have restructured uh, the road department than what what has been spent in the past. It's actually saving us. Uh, and when you talk about salaries, and it has nothing to do with with, uh, with with retirement insurance benefits. It has nothing to do with benefits, but just in salaries, it's saving twenty four thousand eight hundred a year. There will be no benefits in this. There will be, but I'm not comparing benefits to benefits. Is what I'm saying. I'm just comparing pay to pay from the past till now.
uh, and, and this position is $50,000. Well, I think for these positions, it's because uh, too much for Willie to take on as a whole, and too much for this administrator to take on the trust to take care of the actual trust and the role of it himself. I agree. In these positions, I think it needs to split up, and one can help the other. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be working hand in hand. Jeff uh, Renner, and we have Mary Lois Kearns. 
um, is the, uh, and again, if uh, we can vote on all these off at the same time, as long as we have the same outcome. Make a motion that we accept the names. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Duder? Yes. Mr. Biker? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Biker? Yes. Uh, at this time, I'm going to have Glenn uh, come up um, so she can give a little explanation of this. Uh, uh, the U.S. Veterans Administration Clinic in Berea, um, I'll let you sort of explain it. It's, it's about the occupation. We've had an agreement with the city of Berea for a long time over the Berea Post Office. And U.S. Veterans uh, Building just came into Berea in the last year or two. And we try, we're doing an agreement with with them also. What this is, is these are federal employees, the Berea, people that work at the Berea Post Office, the people that work at the Berea Veterans Center, those are all federal employees. The federal government will not recognize a jurisdiction unless it has 500 employees. So the city of Berea does not have enough employees for them to recognize. So they will not take their occupational tax out of their paychecks. To, to give you an example, the the federal government only recognizes 11 jurisdictions throughout the whole state of Kentucky. We are lucky to be one of those jurisdictions because we have the depot, the points of the depot. Um, and the city of Richmond has theirs because they were grandfathered in it. Um, so whenever they sign someone with a new employee, they automatically look to see where they're working at. They don't have the city of Berea as a jurisdiction, so they automatically put Madison County. So when we get our checks from the federal government of occupational tax, those employees are included in on, on that check. They're sending Madison County their occupational tax, but they're actually working in the city of Berea, and city of Berea should be receiving their occupational tax. So we've had agreement for a long time with the city of Berea over their post office. Um, and what happens is once a year, this, this occupational tax comes into Madison County um, monthly. But once a year, we get a, a statement from the post office telling the wages of all their employees. We take those wages and we calculate them out exactly how much the 1% they sent to us. We calculate that up. We, we keep, when we get a total of how much tax is owed to city grid, our county keeps 1% as an administrative fee for our employees calculating doing all the work. And then we send that amount of money to the city of Berea. Now Berea's tax is a 2% tax, ours is 1%. So then the city of Berea bills those employees for that other 1%. We've had this contract with um, the city of Berea of the post office for years and years and it's been doing it, but now the VA has come on board. So we wanted to update our, our policy that we have with Berea, and we also want to make one for the VA hospital and do the same exact thing for them. Because if we did not send this money on to them, all those employees have the right to come back and ask for a refund from us because they did not work in our jurisdiction. So it's much easier to calculate it at one time and send it to the correct jurisdiction than it is to have all these employees come back. And, and the reason we brought up the uh, Berea Postal Agreement is we couldn't find anywhere where it ever meant their core. And so we wanted to uh, just make sure that we had record of it. Are you just looking to accept this agreement? Or? Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is agreed on by everybody involved. Yes. Yes, this works great. We just wanted to... VA needs to be brought into the agreement with them, and then we just want to update the Berea one. But City of Berea, they love it because if not, they would be having to go after them for the 2%. Mayor's here. Do you have any questions for the mayor? Are you comfortable with Mayor? Yes. Thank you. We'll, we'll actually vote on two different ones here. We'll just know that the Berea agreement was done in the past. Or the Berea, the Berea Postal Agreement. We're voting on the update then. I move to uh, vote on it and move motion to uh, approve the update then. Um, and just for everybody's record, this will be the, the we're voting right now on the U.S. Veterans Administration Clinic Brewery Agreement. Okay. So, call the roll, please. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Barber? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Yes. Now I just need a motion and a second for the Berea Postal Agreement, which was done previous years. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Yes.
next thing is the uh, first reading. Uh, I would like to amend the uh, uh, an ordinance that deals with our business license. <clears throat> and uh, in the past, it was with the treasurer's office. Uh, then it moved to the planning and zoning department, and and it's been at the planning and zoning department. But yet the the treasurer's office has been doing it for the past two years, um, and so it's just cleaning up. Uh, an ordinance and I in this ordinance I would like to give um, the county judge the authority to choose who does business license so that we're not bringing this ordinance back and forth to court depending on what changes and what doesn't change um, I personally feel like the Glenn should be able to do them and the code's office of planning zone be able to do them um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's a disservice to our plumbers and HVAC builder contractors that go get building permits all the time. And if, if, if they go there to get a building permit and their business license is not up to date, and then they'd have to travel all the way up to the treasurer's office to get a business license to come back. Um, and so this way it'll allow it to be a lot smoother to the, to the people that need business license. Well, they'll fly and kind of one building and have to come to the other building to pay the fees, is that correct? And if that's what it takes, that you want to do this for the business, that's fine. Save the, the working person. That's right. And to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and that's what it is. And it's ordinance number uh, 1501. Uh, and then it reverts back to ordinance number 1212. And then that reverts back to the original ordinance, which is uh, ordinance number 0421. And y'all should have copies of, of those in the <laughs> So, so you say both officers are there with them? Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that right now, but that is my want. Once we get the planning and codes administrator, uh, a department head there, then yes, that's the way I want it to work. At. I don't think there would be any problem with that. Um, well, that's what I was getting ready to ask you. Uh, the conflict of not knowing. No, I think I think we, the finance office still needs to be over it because. That's how we track our taxes, sure. the occupation taxes. And that's what we had problems with before. When he got moved out of our office, we just couldn't get it to get, get everything together. It wasn't, it wasn't good. The, the um, property in that office, they should be able to. Yes, but they and, should be able to take, I mean, they can take money. They can, they 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 can need, they give them business licenses out. Yes. Yeah, there'll be a process. I mean, once it's a. Uh, we got to come in. And Roger, the way it works is he'll adopt the written policy, mm -hmm. okay. and that way he can adopt his policy from time to time rather than having to provide the court to decide what we're going to do. And this is just first reading, so if there's any tweets that need to be made, we can go. We'll be back.
Chris, are we ready to get started back? I don't know if it's ever been turned off. I think you're good. Okay. And everybody here obviously knows that we just had a uh, tornado drill. There was a national tornado drill uh, today at 10.07. So we had to actually go downstairs and come back. So at this time, uh, Clark Barge, if you call the roll, please. Master Two? Yes. Master Michael? Here. Master Jones? Here. Master Here. Here. Judge, usually any time that we would have a quick adjournment, we would go in and then uh, reconvene and go through the whole procedure again. But of course, if this was an actual emergency, we wouldn't have time to do that. Right. Just kind of an unusual situation, but I want to make sure the record knows that we're all present and ready to do business. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, back uh, back to what we were talking about prior to the tornado drill was we were talking about the uh, the ordinance, which is the first reading of the business license. Did y'all have any other discussion no. on that? No. No, we did not. Did we get a motion on it? I think we were still just kind of discussing mm -hmm. the product of the motion. Yeah. I move to accept the change in the ordinance. Second. Mr. Barger? Yes, Mr. Tudor. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is something that uh, you all know I have a concern about uh, is our is our jail uh, is our debt on our jail the cost of what our jail is I know I talked to all the magistrates about it um, and uh, we Cheryl Cross uh, is our grant writer and uh, she has come up found a grant. Sheriff, if you don't care to come up to the podium, uh, that basically allows us the opportunity to, I think it's a $150,000 grant, and it's a federal grant, and um, they're going to give these grants out to 20 different government entities that, that are responsible for their jail, is, yeah. is my understanding. Um, and so it will allow us to uh, have funds to really get into detail of our jail and our situation with our jail and to allow us to come up with a solution. Um, it allows us to hire cons some consulting. Um, and this time, Cheryl, I'm going to let you explain it in a little bit more in more depth and uh, if any of the managers have any questions. Okay. The grant is through the MacArthur Foundation and they work with the Justice Cabinet to look at detention centers across the nation to analyze their problems, the overcrowding, over-reliance, and the excessive cost. Uh, basically, they're going to provide for 20, uh, $150,000 grants. They're planning grants. And their goal for the grant is for you to um, provide or uh, compose a board of state members, which include law enforcement, prosecutors, <coughs> attorneys, pretrial, County Judge Executive, and of course the jailer, to look at all the policies and the data of the jails uh, to see if they can make recommendations to uh, uh, reduce over reliance on the jails, um, if it comes down to overcrowding, what to do. Uh, they provide technical assistance, they provide data analysis, they will take everything that we give them and work on giving you information back. Uh, what the grant will do is pay for a project director to oversee the grant, uh, to help oversee the board. Um, it provides for training. There are required trainings for the board members and the project director to go to Washington twice and provide other trainings, uh, maybe visit facilities that have uh, workout situations. Uh, it does provide for uh, if they need software upgrades, it provides for that. Basically, the ideal is for the jurisdiction to form a board to comprehensively look at the situation to make sure that it's, oh, well, I just need to be in jail. You know, look what's caused. Of the, you know, if it's, uh, it'll follow things through the court system, 
sentencing everything. It looks at everything to see what the problem is, population growth, and basically where you need to go. It's a, the grant will go from June to December, the $150,000 grant. And if uh, you're selected from there, one of the, there's going to be 10 grants thereafter that they will provide up to $2 million grants <coughs> to help with the correction of the solution and the goals that you find and you analyze that you need. Uh, the $2 million will be initially given and awarded on a two-year period and if necessary up to a five-year period. So you have the potential, if you meet all the goals and they've seen that they can work on your problems with up to $10 million to be funded for a five-year period. Where did you find this program? Uh, basically, I get a lot of announcements grants just networking. Find some more. Well, and that's something that your project manager can start looking at, other funding sources, and to continue building on what's going on with the board. That would be a, a goal to have. Who, who would appoint the project manager? Uh, that would be up to the fiscal court. So we don't know if we need <clears throat> I think before we do anything with the jail, it's a good idea to, you know, to get all the background information we can on, on the process we need to go through and, and for the uh, right. improvements and so forth need to be and get an advisory board on it. So I think this is a great idea. Right. And, and they'll look at the data. They'll look at the inmates, uh, their sentence length, everything. They analyze everything. And, and if they can make recommendations, they will. If it comes out that there's nothing to do but overcrowding, and they'll recognize that also. But the main thing is to bring in all the potential players that will have a voice in the process. I love it. I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I've been talking about having a, a committee for some time now about, you know, just us all getting together and figuring out what's best for our community with the jail, because we all know we have an issue. Um, and so this allows us to actually Get some have some fun, funds to do that, you know, so. And it's a formal board. It'll be, you know, mm -hmm. something that we're in real life to yeah. continue. Are there any other questions? Well, I know that uh, Master Combs and I, we were talking about the other day, we've scratched our head and we've looked at numbers and we've visited the jail. I've been through it from one end to the other with the, with the, with the Thomas. And, I mean, there, we've got a lot of tough problems in the jail. So I welcome any input on the jail that would help us come to a, a, a resolution to what we're going to do with it. And so I think that's a great opportunity for us. And what the resolution does is basically your consensus that you're coming on board with it and that we can present with the grants. Well, I think we all need to be on board with that. And thank you for catching that. So at this time, need a motion and a second to move forward. Move. Call the roll, please. I'll second that one. Yes. 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 At this time, it's judge's report. Uh, I did want to make mention that uh, on Thursday, March 5th, that I declared a state of emergency uh, in the county, uh, as well as the governor Bashir declared a federal state of emergency uh, all over the state. Uh, uh, this week, uh, we will have uh, EKU, and uh, we have one from UK uh, intern starting. We interviewed. There was quite a quite a few that uh, that turned in applications in the interest of interviewing with interns. And I, I'm very excited about this program because it uh, it allows us to network with Eastern. Um, it allows us to uh, to network with other universities, uh, other other college kids that are coming up in the workforce. Um, we have 10, and I just at this time just want to read a few of, of just some of the projects um, that, that some of the interns will be doing. Uh, we've got one that's going to be in the IT department. Uh, we've got several in the judge's office, in the finance office, parks department. Uh, we've got one that's uh, interested in uh, 911. Um, she's going to be over helping with uh, And then we've got one that looks like maybe it's going to be in family, family court. But, just some of the things that, that we want them to work on, a branding campaign, um, 
Uh, we're going to work on that. Uh, one of the things that I noticed when we came into office is, you know, uh, there's all these different business cards, there's all these different letterheads, there's, uh, and so I really want us to bring in Madison County. Um, and so they're, they're going to work on that. Uh, uh, let's see, they're going to work on some press releases, um, uh, ethics board press release. Um, there's one that's going to be looking through a lot of our contracts, just to make sure that we're up to date uh, on a lot of our contracts that we have. Uh, make sure that, that we don't need to update them at all. Uh, one's going to be working with uh, at the Parks Department, just looking at a tourism analysis, um, just an, uh, analyzing the structures of our county parks and departments and seeing if there's any tourism opportunities for us at the parks. Uh, one of the things that uh, I know Roger and I talked about was uh, the potential of maybe having some car shows, you know, at some of our parks and doing some things like that and just reaching out um, just to uh, encourage people to use our parks. Uh, we're going to do, uh, one of them is going to work on an inventory project, uh, insurance assessment wrap-up, uh, vehicle tagging, making sure that the vehicles that we are actually are using that we're not paying insurance on. Um, uh, one's going to be uh, with uh, social media, um, with uh, Chris. Uh, one's going to work on our drug policies manual, job description manual, fleet management policy, inclement weather policy. So that, that's, uh, that's exciting. Um, we've got one that, like I said, it's going to be at 911. Uh, one's going to be at Road Department. Um, and um, I'm not sure if it's a he or she. she she's going to work for Painted Hand with Stacy in uh, uh, uploading all the login information in, in, the, in the road, uh, in the access program, so that we can uh, be ready when we do get a program. So all that information is, is in there. So I'm, I'm excited about those. And this is not costing us anything. This is not costing us one dime. Um, we've uh, worked out with, uh, with Eastern uh, where they'll actually get class credits. So they can actually do a class credit. So they will time clock in and clock out so that we have records for, for, for wherever they might be getting a credit from. Um, we're in the process of interviewing for firefighters. Um, we, uh, we started out going to be hiring for two positions, but we actually, uh, after, I think it was one day last week, it was after the 25th deadline, we actually had a firefighter that actually is moving over to the Berea Road Department. And so um, we're actually going to be hiring three now uh, because we've had one that has left us. So we wish him luck and thank him for service uh, to, to Madison County Government. Um, there is a March 17th, Mass County Home Builders uh, is having a pancake breakfast from 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, 336 Highland Park Drive, and the proceeds uh, go to God's Outreach Food Pantry. So anybody that's uh, interested in coming to that, uh, it'll be a good time. Hopefully there'll be a lot of people, so I encourage people to come out and support uh, the Home Builders Association and uh, God's uh, Outreach Food Pantry. Uh, remember again, uh, and I'm probably just going to say this every meeting, Whitehall Park is closed. Uh, as of March 1st through October 31st, uh, the Whitehall Park is closed, and but the historical house, Whitehall State Shrines, what I've always called it growing up, is, is open. It is open. It's just our county park's closed, or the where the lake is. Uh, remember to check us out on Mass County. Uh, we're, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember that. So, uh, Scott, at this time, um, I'm going to ask Scott to come up. Uh, and this is the start of our uh, comments from department heads. I'm going to ask Scott to come up and just present a little bit about him. I know that spring is, is on its way. Well, I just, uh, Judge Taylor, I prepared a quick summary statement of, of the solid waste department. Just going to go through the services real quick. Uh, right now we're looking at loan and truck scheduling. Uh, loan and truck scheduling is up to about the middle of April, April 9th. Uh, if anybody wants to call in and schedule those trucks, uh, do, do quickly because of the uh, schedule will quickly fill up. Uh, I'm going to talk about the livestock program. Uh, the Cease Livestock Program has been super busy lately. This morning when I checked it at 8 a.m., we had 22, uh, 22 places to visit this morning with a, a head number, count number of 33 to Cease Livestock to take care of today. Uh, the new truck update, uh, the engine, we had some engine issues with it. We're waiting on uh, for a piston sleeve to arrive at Bluegrass International Trucks, our, service, our warranty uh, service dealer. That's where we purchased the truck yet, and that's where we are getting our, our warranty work done. Uh, the 
say the least, it's been a little bit of a displeasure uh, with this process of warranty repair with this truck. So in the future, we may look at other other dealerships and other places to take care of any issues that come up with these vehicles. So, but it's been been a real busy program. Uh, the last couple of weeks, especially with the calving season with our local farmers here, that's been devastating. I, I noticed, uh, I read one call this morning, one farmer had lost 11 calves this morning. So, uh, that's, a, that's a, lot on, a lot on the bottom line for farmers. Uh, large item pickups, requests for that have been steady, Judge. Uh, I mean, recently, um, Chris Israel uh, helped out and we've got that service available online. So, if anyone has a question or wants to request that online in the county, you're available to that. Uh, you fill it out, tell us what you want to pick up, and it emails me as well, and then I will schedule with you uh, an available time that the office will come pick those items up. Um, want to announce, I've been working with Bluegrass Green Source. They are organizing what's called a Main Street Cleanup, which is going to be focused around the city of Richmond for Earth Day on April 22nd. Uh, we will, I'll have further details with that in, in future fiscal reports once we get closer to the date about where we're going to start at and where we're going to, what we're going to clean up on that day as well. I um, just want to announce that uh, River Sweep will be Saturday, June 20th, uh, from 9 a.m. until noon. It will be followed at noon with a cookout. We'll be rallying at the Boonesboro State Park uh, down beside the beach. There will be boats that will transport people back and forth across the river to do cleanup as well as around the Boons uh, Boonesboro Beach area and as well as down the river and such, that, that pool of water. We usually pull about two to three tons of trash out of the river and seeing that the river is in the shape that it is today with flooding, I foresee a river sweep that will have a lot of uh, a lot of stuff for us to keep us busy down. So, I uh, just also want to let the fiscal court know that our office is applying for a crumb rubber grant, crumb rubber mulch uh, grant for our two Union City Park and for Percival Park to be able to replace the mulch in those parks to put down the safety of the crumb rubber. Uh, that grant is due in on March 16th. I'm working to close that out and get it submitted, as well as our annual household hazardous waste collection grant, which comes from the state as well. Uh, that's due in the, in the middle of April, and we'll shoot for a, a tentatively uh, planned event in October. Also received confirmation from the state that this fall, uh, Madison County will be having a, uh, what is formerly called a tire amnesty event. Uh, that's the free tire disposal. Uh, Farmers, everybody from the community uh, are able to bring off tires and drop them off. That will we'll have a determined location later, as well as the, as the time frame this fall. Um, formerly known as Tire Amnesty, they're branding that as Free Tire Disposal Event, and that's sponsored through the state Kentucky Division of Waste <coughs> Management. So um, that's what the department's been up to. Any questions? How well, do you think we can uh, coordinate with Bria and get a location? Um, Judge Combs, we did that in the past. In 2009, we did that in the past, and it became kind of a hindrance to the operation of that. If the city of Berea, and I'm not going to put them on the spot, if they want to organize a spot and transport those tires themselves to the main location, but I don't think we can get the state to put a second contractor in place for the event. They want to keep the, uh, the main pile of the disposal or drop-off site on state property. Where's that location? Is going to try uh, No, in the past we I can't speak, I'm not going to speak for the state, but in the past we've had it uh, at the State Road Garage out on 25, okay. and I foresee that it will probably be there in, in the future for this fall. We couldn't have it. We, no, I'm sorry. We, we couldn't have it at the uh, road department number two that's more suitable and centrally located? You could, theoretically, yes. Um, I'm not going to, the, the grounds with a lot of these tires, you get a lot of uh, dirt, mud, and just debris from it as well. It works a lot better to be working on, on an asphalt surface. The State Highway Department's uh, lot is uh, blacktop. Uh, you know, we can ask that question. Definitely. Well, I'm not complaining, but I'm thankful yeah. we're going to get that. That was going to be a question I was going to ask. Maybe Ronnie could bring it up to the city council meeting and see if you all could get a site where you all could bring it to us. I think it's beneficial to us. 
And I'll be happy to ask the state about that, especially about a lot of really questions about that issue of having it in on our property versus on state property. How many tires did you get the last time? 2009, we had uh, passenger tire equivalents of 75,000 tires in Madison County. Passenger tire equivalent is a tractor trailer tire counts for about two of a normal passenger, 2.5 of the normal passenger tires. So tractor trailer tires are factored in there as well. Uh, 2009, we had around 75,000. 2012, we had 56,000. So uh, we're removing those from our society. And every, every time you see a tire on, on the side of the street, you're always wondering where it came from. And, and you know, uh, tires are mosquito. A, a friend of mine labeled them as mosquito incubators. So as many of them as you can remove around the, the environment, the, the less mosquitoes maybe you will see. To get your uh, heater fixed in your vehicle, one of your vehicles I saw purchased for a heater in one of them. Oh yes, the, the backup dead wagon had a heater issue. Uh, the blower motor had, had wore out of it, so we had to have that replaced. Bad time being without heater. Yes, sir. Well, not so much this week, but last week it was. Yeah. Um, the uh, question I have is on the truck that's getting fixed, the, the warranty agreement. Yes, sir. Um, should, can, is there anything we can do to help? Pressure, put a little pressure on them. It seems like that truck's been down for some time. It's been down for 33 days today. Uh, I spoke with them and, and uh, got kind of and put some pressure on this morning, Judge Taylor, to give me some answers. And I'm hoping to see it Thursday or Friday repaired. We're sitting with a cylinder breakdown. They're replacing a rod and replacing a cylinder. Now, what they told me this morning, they were waiting for the cylinder sleeve to arrive via UPS or FedEx or whatever. So uh, I'm on top of it, but unfortunately, it's just taking a long yeah. time. I appreciate what you're doing with it, but it, you know, just let me know if, uh, if we need to put a little pressure on them. Indeed. We, we have a nice looking man sitting down here at the end. Hey, I can do it too, man. Yeah. 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 Any other questions, guys? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, any other department heads the, have anything? Just if you want an update on last week's storm. Uh, yeah, be good. Real quick. You got 45 seconds. Okay. Go. All right. Uh, as uh, Judge Taylor said, we did all three governments file a declaration of disaster state of emergency, which allowed us to, to circumvent certain rules like hours drive by snowplow drivers and things like that. Uh, Madison County uh, EMA Facebook page had 30,000 readers during those three days uh, with 300 new likes plus. Uh, we started 24 hour EOC operations on Wednesday, the 4th and completed them at 5 o'clock on Friday the 6th. Had about 100 transports managed by 911 and taken by various entities. Uh, few power outages occurred, none were large or prolonged, so we were happy for that because of the cold negative numbers we were getting on temps. Uh, high snowfall up in the Clays Ferry area, have a measurement of 17 inches provided to us by a resident with a, a good ruler, and we can see it. Eight to nine was the average around Richmond, and six down here in Berea. That's kind of the highlights, low lights, however you want to look at it. We're gathering the numbers for our declarations to see if we can get re any reimbursements. State is not there yet. I'm sure the state will qualify based on all the I-65 and I-24 issues that occurred, though, for all those people. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Uh, and again, I want to commend the road department, the sheriff's department, CSEP, you know, everybody that was involved in the cleanup. You know, everybody wants to work very hard. So I appreciate appreciate all of them, and I appreciate the community being patient. Um, any other department heads? This time, magistrates' comments. <coughs> Tom, Judge, I, I need just a second. Unfortunately, it's a little unorthodox, but I need to get to a podium. Yeah, go ahead. You're good. <coughs> First, I, I want to thank all the residents of Madison County for their patience. We've had two snowstorms here in the last couple of weeks, friends, as far as I'm concerned, are record storms. Things that, uh, when I was a kid, you would have been out of school for two or three weeks, if not a month at a time, and everybody was very patient. And listen, now, on that last one that we had, I went through some neighborhoods on Saturday, and I'm telling you what, you could eat off the streets in the places where I, they were that great. 
And uh, so that leads into Willie. Really just I want to thank you. Please tell all those guys down there at the road department how much we appreciate them. And a pat them on the back. A 24-hour shift, I don't care who you are or what you do, that's a killer. And uh, but we certainly appreciate that. Now, what I really came up here for was for, um, we, we are all the time hearing a lot of negative things. We get feedback about something that happened that we didn't, didn't go well or didn't go as a customer would have it. Well, this is a story that I want to share. And I'm going to ask um, Deputy Sturgill, he's with us today. Philip Sturgill's here. If you will, I'd like you just to come up here with us. Just a quick show of hands. Can anyone in here tell us what happened or remember February the 26th? I can. Here's why that's important, and this is what I want to share with you. On February the 26th, my son had surgery. And uh, so I had worked all night. I had been over at the, uh, at the hospital all day long. We were supposed to get in at 2.30. Uh, that drug on, it was 4.30, we still haven't been in, and finally he gets back behind. Well, my stress level's about gone to begin with, and uh, in the course of that, my son's wife is a teacher up in Jackson County, and she was trying to get over, and listen, it was a cold day, it was a blistering cold day, and I called her to see where she was at, let her know, you know, Casey'd been taken back, and uh, she said, Tom said, I've got a flat tire. I'm on the interstate, my tire blew out. Well, first of all, Jesus took the wheel and got her on the side of the road, and she didn't have a wreck. And uh, while she was sitting there, uh, Deb Sturgill pulled in behind her. And, you know, friends, there's a lot of things that he could have done. He could have sat there and waited for AAA. I mean, it's just a million things that could have happened. But what he chose to do on that day, which was not his job, he got out and changed her tire. And I'm just telling you, the stress for such a simple thing I called, that she said, I'm back up on the road, that deputy stopped by, I changed my tire, that just made the rest of my day fantastic. The sun got out, got back, it was just, it was awesome. But all of that directly goes back to deputy uh, Sturgill. And listen, this is, this is, I'm just patting deputy Sturgill on the back. That's every single deputy we've got. We've got people all across our county that step up and go above and beyond, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the good work you do. Appreciate it.
painted it hard on me, I'll tell you that. Yes, you're doing a good job. Believe me, I'm in the office quite a bit. And uh, uh, I, I said it from the start, knew it from the start, they it's going to be running to see what, what we used to do here. And this is the latest one I know. And I appreciate everything she does for me, and she does it for all of us the same. Uh, she tells it like it is, not the way it needs to be, but I appreciate everything she does. Thank you. Larry? Judge, I guess the, the things on my mind today, of course, I talked to Landon, I talked to you both together on Friday, over the, over the dad and I. Claims today is 105,216 to Grant County. Now, is that for two, three months back? That's for September through January. September through January. All right, does that get us up to date? Yes, we do not have any, any more inmates in Curry County. I don't know where we got inmates, Larry, than right now is in Clark County and a few in Casey County. Well, we got a $17,550 bill for Clark County. That was for February. For February. That was just for February. So, we spent, Larry, we spent a total of $166,566 from, in this fiscal year, <laughs> on inmates. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what we said. Spent up to date through this one. It's 166,000. Now, I went ahead and um, you'll see in your transfers, did a line item transfer from the reserve for transfer from the general fund over to the reserve for transfer for jail fund for 200,000. When we did our budget last year, we have never before, since I've been here, and, never, and I, not that I know of before then, ever had to send any of our inmates out to another facility to be held. This is something brand new. This didn't incur, occur until July. It was the first time that we had to send. July was the first time I we had to send. I think it's first day. Um, so we were not prepared for this yeah. budget. So when we pre prepared our budget for this year, it was already extremely tight. I mean, if everyone knows the jail, the funding problems, um, keeping state inmates, keeping our funding up there, and that the overpopulation cost us everywhere. It cost us some food, it cost us some utilities. Um, manpower, it cost everywhere. So our budget was already extremely tight without having the cost of having to send inmates out. So I looked at how much I thought and hoped that it will uh, take to get us through the end of the year. And so we estimated and just did around $200,000 transfer. Hopefully that will be enough to get us through to our new budget. And then in our new budget, until we find a solution for this, we'll have to put that line item in our new budget for keeping prisoners in other facilities. Is that money that, that you're talking about, is that reserved for transfers? Is that where it's coming yes. from? Yes. So yes. that actually could be spent in for it, really? Yes. Yes. It's not allocated to anything. It's in the general fund under reserve for transfer. Mm -hmm. It's not How allocated. much do we have in that thing? <coughs> uh, I'm not holding you to the pen. I'm sorry. Uh, Three million two hundred something thousand. So it'll bring us right down to like three million. And we don't have to have a budget amendment if we no, move it from there. No, sir. I know a lot of times you have to have budget amendments. For yeah, I checked change. with DLG yesterday just to make sure because this is not something we commonly have had to do. Um, I checked check with DLG and they said no, that you just put it in as a transfer just like your normal transfers. Okay, and then do we owe Fayette County two mile attention in? I'm sure we do. We, we, we owe them money every month. I, I wrote, I signed a check, $15,000 last week for them. That, gets that was the last quarter. I don't know about that. It's just what the bill was. I'm not sure how how behind they are on the billing. They're probably a month behind. Um, but we get those bills every month from them. Now. And it doesn't have anything. All these, this, what I'm talking about, is all adult inmates. It's all being paid for adult inmates to be held. And your best guess, how many people? Um, I would say, I was talking to Doug, I would approximate, when we get a bill in from them, we send it over to Doug. They go over and make sure that who they got on that bill was actually there and was air prisoner and everything. Then they send it back to us if it has to be reconciled or anything. Um, I'm approximately 40 to 50 prisoners a month. You are welcome to call my office and come over and I can give you the exact numbers on any time we need that. But right now, um, we, we only have about um, 20 out total. Right now. So it has gone down some. Um, Where are they being, being held now? Clark and Casey. Clark and Casey. And we're up to date on, we, we just paid uh, Clark County's February bill, 
and I think Casey, last court we paid Casey County's so up to date. So we are up to date. The next bills we'll be getting is for March. Well, Tom said there earlier, you know, we've discussed this. It seems like every time we get together, we may be in Louisville, Lexington, Franklin, or work, and we always discuss it. And Tom said he's <coughs> going to try to crunch some numbers. I'll take a blender to crunch your numbers. But, uh, you know, we have school systems a lot of time that will belly up or, or good work, belly up, and uh, they go broke. Well, we're broke on the jail. Well, the state steps in and takes over the school system. I wondered if you set up a meeting with corrections, take the treasurer, the judge, the deputy judge, tell them we're broke, take it over, and let's get out from underneath. Would that be a possibility? I'd like to turn it over to the state tomorrow. That's something that the advisory board look into, what the possibilities are. It is, yeah. I've had actually two meetings scheduled with uh, the Department of Corrections, and uh, they've both been canceled because of snowstorms. Uh, the last one was last Friday, and I was wanting to have, to have that meeting prior to this meeting just so I could give you all an update of where we're at, but uh, we, I've got to reschedule the Department of Corrections uh, meeting. But it's, it's, that is, uh, to me, that's our first step. That allows us to figure out um, what our limitations are, what my limitations are as a county judge, as a fiscal court, what, what we can do. Uh, so. Well, that's just a thought because, and you know, and I know, we've had several school systems that, you know, when my they come in, took them over, and they run. Well, I'm not saying we're bankrupt, but at the rate we're going, we're going. To. And now there's got an opportunity to give it to the state and run. Way bye bye. I'll ask. Well, it doesn't ever hurt to ask. I doubt they're going to uh, take our jail over until we go bankrupt, and I don't want to go to that to that extreme. Well, when you spend all the money in the budget, and you have to transfer from somewhere else, you're broke. Yeah. I mean, I don't believe it can get no sense from that. And you know I had that conversation with you Friday, and you, all of us together, and I said, I'm not looking for any more transfers to the jail. Once we spend this next two weeks, you know, we transferred 200000 two weeks ago, correct? Um, I think we transferred 100000 I've got 150000 transfer right here. That's a cash transfer that you're all going to sign on. But that's not <coughs> kept the 200000 that you have left? No, we have 100000 left in cash transfers. Now, the transfer that I was referring to a minute ago was a line item transfer, not cash. But I do have 150000 cash transfer here, and we have 100000 left transfer. Now, we budgeted for $1.2 million to be transferred from the general fund to the jail fund in cash transfers. I, I do believe we'll exceed that. I think we'll come in more like $1.4 to $1.5 million. Um, that's just... The jail is a... We have seen over the last five years, we have constantly went up. We were we used to, years ago, we were self-sufficient. Before we had the overcrowding and we got to keep our own juveniles. But since all that has changed, we, every year we have gone up about 200000 a year in the amount of money. Now, there are lots of counties that give $2 million, $2.5 million. So we're not the only, I mean, everyone's in this boat. Everyone's struggling with this. But there's a lot of counties that give a whole lot more than we do to fund their jail too. Well, I'm sure of that. But I mean, I don't want to follow the other counties just because they, they say, well, this cost us a million dollars extra. Be it. Uh, and you say you're transferring again today to 100,000. 150. It's on the, the 200 is the line item transfer, 150 in cash. Both of them? Yeah. It's two different, totally separate things. Though. The line item is you're just transferring budget line item money from one fund to the other. So it's, it just has to do with your budget. The other one is actually a cash transfer of cash from one fund to the other. I don't like the word cash. Because that sounds like you're hiding something. But I know what you're saying, and I understand that. You know, I thought the state was from I read in the paper where they want to spend eight hundred thousand dollars for the old Tom Davis, but didn't even address anything about the, the jail. 
and then they, I think that they did pass a law where you could put it on the ballot for sales tax. Well, who in the world in Madison County is low enough to vote their self for sales tax? I don't believe that's been passed yet. Well, they say it's going yeah, to I don't believe it's the session. I hope it don't. But it, it, it's left up to the people of this court to say, well, we're going to put it on the ballot, and it's up to you to vote. In 2003, I came in office. We had to give the jail fifty thousand dollars a year, and we increased it every year. Uh, and it, it, it's not those increases weren't because of inmates going anywhere. It's just that the jail was costing more money. Now you you are paying for these inmates to go somewhere now, but it, but also you're spending more money in the jail because you got more people to feed, you got more guards to pay, you got insurance to pay. You'll never buy them. You pull it on. Right. They use more electricity. So, every so all those costs go up. So it's not just the inmates that's going out, but there's people going around the jail just because we've got more there. And, and, and guys, at the end of the day, I talk about permanent expenses a lot, and that's a permanent expense. And you have to plan for permanent expenses. And uh, if you don't plan for permanent expenses, then you're going to be 310 inmates in a 195 bed facility with a $3 million debt. But the sad part of it is there's a lot of counties in the same shape we're in on the jail issue. And it's not just us. That's all I have. You forgot one thing? I'm letting you be here. Glad you're here. Sometimes I question that. <laughs> <laughs> Comments from the audience. Anybody in the audience got something? Sure. Magistrates over here are well familiar with me, but we have two new and a new judge I've never been before. Uh, I'm Emerson McAfee, and I'm the president of the Vietnam Veterans Chapter 1066 here in the county. Uh, I'm coming here today to see if I can get an enormous amount of money from you folks, uh, somewhere between $500 and $1,000. Uh, we are coordinating with the Jemima uh, Boom Chapter of the DAR. We are uh, planning a celebration recognition meeting at uh, the Lancaster Road Church of Christ on the 9th of May. We, uh, in conjunction with uh, the DO, DOD, Department of Defense, they are honoring all the folks involved during the period 1964 to 1975. This is the 50th anniversary started last year in 2014 and it'll run through 2025. All kinds of celebrations in Vietnam. What we're aiming to do is have two years uh, to uh, do a couple of celebrations. This year, we're wanting to honor all the Vietnam era, and that could be in Vietnam, but during 64 to 75, women veterans. Uh, also, we want wanting to honor the uh, widows of veterans who were killed over there in the war. And we're also going to honor all the wives of the veterans who served during that time, no matter where they served. Uh, DOD is sending out a nice uh, certificate to the uh, widows that those were killed over there and the female veterans that served during that time. We are creating our own certificate for the wives. Uh, we have invited Heather French Henry, who is the commissioner of the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. We hope that she'll come and she'll sing the national anthem for us. Uh, we've also invited uh, our uh, U.S. Representative Andy Barr, State uh, Representative Rich Smart, uh, State <coughs> Senator uh, Jerry Carpenter, uh, Mayor of Richmond. We're going to be invited to Mayor of Maria. Here, I don't know. Uh, uh, and of course, the letter tells you that you all are invited also to come to this thing. Uh, we have one lady that has already been contacting and agreed that she will be there. And her husband and my organization killed on a mountaintop in Laos, about 20 miles from North Vietnam, when the site was overrun and the Air Force lost 12 people in that overrunning. Uh, a lot of the bodies were never recovered. 
they have since uh, recovered, I believe it was bone fragments, of three of them, but the rest of them have never been found. The man that uh, helped get four of the wounded people out, uh, Richard Etchberger, was not, uh, recognized in 2010, upgraded from the Air Force uh, Cross to the Medal of Honor. He was there, he helped get four of the wounded people out, and then he was killed in the helicopter before they could exit the area. The man that was with him in there was from Berea. Uh, he originally came in service from Pennsylvania, lived in Berea, worked out here at the Air Force radar site. He married a local girl, I believe her last name, I believe her name was Dorsey. And, uh, she still lives in Richmond. She is the one that uh, I know of, I believe there's two or three more that are widows. They are going to be honored over there. Uh, I think I've given you enough, the rest of it is probably in the letter. And we're, we're asking for some help with the uh, luncheon for this thing, and we're estimating anywhere between $500 and $1,000. I'm guessing somewhere around seven to eight, maybe. Uh, we've worked with the fiscal court before when we had the uh, Welcome Home Veterans Celebrations five years in a row. Uh, what we did then was we just submitted a bill, and you took care of the bill for us. And at this time, I'm hoping that we just have one bill, a caterer come and cater this with sandwiches and potato salad and beans, whatever drinks and help you uh, celebrate this thing and we would sure appreciate it if you could find your way free for a small amount of money. <coughs> any questions? Have you, have you already contacted the beach from about transportation and buses? Have you all made any contact with the beach? Uh, I'm not sure what you you're talking about. Shove about moving people around? Not to this event. Okay. No, this won't be needed. Okay. Everybody I think we'll arrive at the location we're going to have it. Okay. We, we've got the, says there, we've got the young Marines, the young organization of kids that acting like Marines. They're going to uh, present the colors. My organization is going to present that uh, missing man ceremony that we've done at several occasions around the county. And the uh, Madison County Veterans Honor Guard will be doing the gun salute taps. I'd like to also bring a couple other events to your attention. Uh, this is May 9th. The following Saturday, our chapter is going to have a car show. Somebody mentioned car shows. We'd be willing to maybe down the road to help you with something like that at your parks or something. But we're having one on the 16th at the Honda dealer on the bypass. I'm trying to raise money for our organization for our purposes we use to help veterans. Uh, the other thing is the end of April. We will be presenting the second award. We did it last year for the first time. It's called the Jerry Olds Memorial Award. He was one of the people in the same organization that was killed in an ambush in 1968 in Vietnam. Uh, they were overrun and uh, they were out surveying and uh, were surprised. They ran into an ambush and uh, all six people were killed. Some of them burnt in the Jeep, some of them fired. Uh, this award was named after him. He was from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Grew up and was raised there until he joined the Air Force. So we created this award in his honor. It was awarded last year to a young EKU student, a senior. Uh, I don't know how it worked out this way, but his hometown was Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And it's just odd that they come from the same place. This year we're doing the same thing in April. We'll present this award black uh, to one of four submittees that they send to us with their own handwritten resumes and what they've done in their three and a half years at Easter. And that's about it, I guess. Any more questions? Get out of your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You know, Judge, we can shake this one about any way we want to, but every single one of us in this courtroom today, holy, to about $2.3 million, uh, million veterans in the United States today, not counting the countless that uh, a lot that just you know, didn't come home, and we're able to hold the court today in a free country because of them. We always support them, help them if we can. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Uh,
I need a motion and a second to pay the claims and approve the transfers. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Collins? No. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bike? Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, next court date is Tuesday, March 24th, 2015, in Richmond. Uh, welcome anybody to come. And at this time, we need a motion to second to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.